hello and welcome to this short video on educational video production. Well, congratulations, you've produced a successful video pitch with plenty of detail and it's been agreed that you can go on and carry on and produce your own educational video production. The question is, what do you do now? It's very tempting to take your camera and go away and record many scenes that are relevant to the video that you want to produce. And when you've done that, you'll come back and find that you've got lots and lots and lots of hours of material that you can now start to edit together to make the video that you want to produce. This is not a good idea because you've now got to sit and wave through all these different scenes and materials and that's going to take you many, many hours of work. This approach to video production is called empirical and Millerton and Owen write about this and they say that at best this approach is fresh and uninhibited. At worst, the results of such shot hunting is a haphazard disaster with little cohesion or sense of purpose. Now, if you like downloading hours and hours of video and wading through wondering what to do with all the different scenes, don't let me stop you. Even the most experienced directors and producers though would struggle with this. So we need a more systematic approach to try and develop our initial video pitch into a finished idea. We have three tools that maybe help us to do this. These are the shot list, the storyboard and the running order. And the process of developing your video idea further from these descriptive ideas into something more sequential is called a video treatment. Now there are different authors who've talked about a video treatment. What, for example, says that the treatment consists of putting down on paper all the things you intend to put into the program in note form with the visuals on the left and an indication of what the sound will be on the right. So before we get to using the video camera and producing hours and hours of video, we can actually do a paper exercise that's going to help us think about what we want to actually record, what it's going to look like and what it's going to sound like. The way of doing this in a shot list is to make something like this. There are details of the image you can see on the left hand side and details of the sound to be recorded that go on the right hand side. And each different scene inside your video production will have a corresponding description of what the image will be and what the sound will be. Now, producing a shot list that looks something like this is a very good idea if you're a beginner because it gets you to think visually what it is that you want to record on the camera and what it is you want the audio to sound like, what you want people to say. You can also tick off the different scenes as you record them, so you should find that all the things you wanted to record for your video have been captured to tape, and when you get to the editing and download stage, you'll find there's no scenes missing. But this doesn't actually give us the visuals. It gives us a description, but it doesn't show us what it looks like. So another tool we can use is a storyboard. As Watts goes on to say, storyboards give you a feel for the film, make you think pictures and give you advance warning of problems and help you to sort them out. In addition to Watts' comment on producing storyboards, the BFI have also produced a series of materials and this comment by Fraser and Oram says that a storyboard is a series of sequential drawings or pictures that are used to represent the intended shots in the film. Ideally, the storyboard will be a paper version of the finished film. Now, many people who are new to video production or maybe more experienced may have heard of storyboards. You may have seen one on a DVD of the making of a film and seen all the details and artwork that goes into them, but they need not be so detailed. The 14 individual scenes that make up this storyboard went on to produce a video that was just over two minutes long. One of the things that a storyboard allows us to do that perhaps a shot list doesn't do as well is it shows us what to point the camera at. If we pick a few scenes from this storyboard, we can compare the sketch frame to the scene that was shot in the finished video. In this first scene, the sketch shows that we wanted the whole of the lecture theatre with the lecturer walking into the scene from the right hand side. When it came to recording the scene, this showed us that we wanted to put the camera at the back of the lecture theatre and have the lecturer walking in from the right hand side of the frame. In a later scene, the sketch showed how we imagined the student to be and the importance of having a modern mobile phone accessible to the student. When it came to the recording, we found that the lecture theatre didn't permit the student to lie down in exactly that way. So we improvise and ask the student to pretend to doze just on one hand, but also to have the mobile phone that's important to the scene handy. In another scene, we see how the sketch illustrates the kind of action we want in the video. The sketch shows the student looking attentive and putting his hand up to ask a question. 
in the recording, we were able to duplicate this and have a close up on the student raising his hand and looking to the lecturer to answer the question that he wants to ask. Now, this comparison shows the value of a storyboard. It shows that when we get the actors and the props and the other devices that we need for our video into positions, we know how to include them and arrange them so the camera can record what we want. A storyboard need not be complicated, but they can also be hard work. Watts, for example, goes on to say, storyboards are hard work, so are impractical for longer films. Even if you only storyboard the tricky sequences, the effort is worthwhile. Now, like many things, the more you practice storyboarding, the better you get at it. And you don't have to be a great artist, as you can see from my sketches, to produce a storyboard. The original artwork I produced uh, looked something like this in a plain old sketchbook. And that was enough to communicate the ideas I wanted and the places to point the camera when I was recording to make the video sequences that I wanted to record. So if you've never produced a storyboard before, you could try sketching a few scenes for the video project that you want to undertake. And you may find it especially useful for the trickier scenes in the video that you want to produce. Now, the third tool we want to make reference to here is called a running order. A running order that looks something like this is used in a studio production where you've got multi cameras and different video sequences that are edited in as the sequences and the video is recorded live. You can see that it involves all the different personnel that are involved in the studio production, including the camera staff, the studio presenters and guests. And then there's a breakdown of all the video sequences that are required for the production. The running order shows how long each sequence will last and where each of those sequences will be sourced from, whether it's from a studio or a graphic or a pre-recorded video sequence. So we now have three different tools that will help us in the treatment of our video production a running order that will help us if we're making a studio production, a storyboard that will illustrate some of the visuals that we may require, and we also have a shot list that gives a description of the image and the sound that we want to record for our video. It's worthwhile spending time producing a shot list or a storyboard because ultimately they're going to save us many, many hours of time in downloading and wading through material that we may record that's random and that may not lead us to the video that we really want to produce.